Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. We actually camped in this field today, but right the way down at that corner, we've had to walk all the way back up, and now we've got to walk down here, which is a bit uh, disconcerting. We just walked that field, but uh, it's probably about 400 meters or so. So today we're walking into the town of uh, Burnley, not Bradford, as I said to the other guy, but Burnley. And um, got my my bees the wrong way around when I spoke to a local the other day, and he thought we were going the wrong way. But uh, Burnley is down there somewhere, and the reason we're heading to Burnley on the uh, the Pennine um, bridle track is because we can get a decent hotel price in Burnley because it's a bigger town and there's lots of sort of uh, premier inns and what have you. So we've booked ourselves a place in there for the night to freshen up, recharge, clean. It's our first hotel actually um, of this journey. So in seven, nearly eight weeks, it's the first time we've treated ourselves to a hotel uh, and only one campsite. So not bad, considering people say it's hard to um, wild camp in England. We've done relatively okay. Yes, it is a, a welcome break. We, we both need it. Everything's very damp and very dirty. And I'm in my, uh, I had to take the bottom off my trousers because they're just so muddy. It's a morning dog walker. Good morning. Can you trust that you won't blow away in the wind? You know, they say there's no money in farming. A lot of these houses, these farmhouses that we've passed up here, they're so grand. Great big grand entrances, bespoke gates, sort of made out of, you know, craftsman style gates that they have made. They're all sporting brand new Range Rovers and uh, Toyota uh, Land Cruisers. It, it's, it, there's a lot of money in farming, I tell you. Uh, I know because we lived in a farming community for quite a few years and it always used to be a saying in the village that the farmer's wife would always cry poverty but never miss a hair saloon app appointment, you know. Um, there's money, a lot of money in farming. But you do have to decide, you know, if you're going to be a farmer, you really give up a lot of freedom, a great deal. You may have a grand house and a lot of land and expensive cars and good schooling for your kids, but you, you have to sacrifice that to the land. I mean, there's very little free time in farming. So, you know, I do respect, um, but I also think when you hear people say there's not money in farming, they're probably doing it wrong because the ones that are actually farming successfully are very, very wealthy indeed. Also in the community we used to live in, which was a big farming community, you could always tell the farmer who was a tidy farmer. The farm was clean and everything was well kept. And then there were farms like this, which had just... I, I want to say disgraceful. I mean, even the wheel on this trailer is missing. It's the tractor must have just stopped there and they just stopped using it. They hoard everything, every car they ever own, every tractor, every piece of equipment. And eventually, just like home ho hoarders, they become like scrap yards and just full of rubbish and dirt and rats. And uh, that happens. You can always tell a tidy farm and you can always tell those that just can't organize their lives. And uh, they are messy, immensely messy, aren't they, Michelle? Yeah, very messy. We used to have one or two near us that were really spectacularly clean and some that were just graveyards of old junk. <laughs> it's so nice in the morning to come alongside a, a canal or a, a riverside canals don't generally run up hills. I love all the uh, the canal boats as well. Oh, sorry, a bit early, feeling a bit groggy, but it is beautiful. Look, it truly doesn't get more beautiful than this, does it? 
absolutely gorgeous. I love these canal sides. Still not actually sure, Michelle, what, na what the name of the canal is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I could not be happier walking canal side. This whole morning's walk has been an absolute breeze. The um, Liverpool and Leeds Canal. Liverpool and Leeds Canal. A gentleman just told us, I haven't heard of it before. Some of our favorite hiking, generally always flat, generally delightful, picturesque, and always walker friendly. Love it. So we're back in a typical English town. Looks so much like many of the towns all over England. Little roads, lots of little mismatch houses and designs, speed humps, speed cameras. Yeah. This is something we've barely seen anything of in the last uh, seven weeks or so. Even the towns are throwing hills at us. It's a nice little town. It's a ethnic mix of different people with great shops, some lovely Asian stores. Wow, I'd love to spend a bit of time here and explore. This is sort of, I believe it's a town called Nelson. Uh, it runs down to Burnley through, I think four different uh, small villages that join together. Of course, we're going to Burnley and as we suspect, it's the last one of the villages on our route. But either way, you know, it's going towards Land's End, so here it's all relative. If we don't walk it now, we'll walk it in a day. So, onwards. We've done uh, oh, close to 10 miles today to get here without um, much of a stop. And we're both, and we're both hurting. My ankles are bruised, Michelle's feet are bruised. And it's from these, we've done probably about five miles now, just on these, on these hard surfaces, these pathways, and it's hurting. We've both taken some painkillers to try and get through the last mile. Uh, but we'll be so glad to stop. So glad to stop. I'm not going to film any more today because apart from this painful walk, the rest of it's going to be elation of just... <laughs> you can picture it, right? On a bed, stood upright in a room, hopefully warm. And as I say, we'll do a live stream maybe later and say hello. A very strange thing just happened. You see in Michelle's hand behind what Michelle's carrying. I was carrying it just now. <laughs> I tried to defend my honour. Um, a guy just pulled up in a van. Uh, no, in a little car, a little hatchback car. And he said, excuse me, sir. He said, can I offer you some food? And we, and we obviously looked. I don't know if we look destitute, but maybe you just took pity. We were hobbling along a bit. And um, he said, oh, no reason. I had a delivery I had to make, and there was uh, nobody there. He said, and I can't, the, the food will go to waste. And he had a lot of sort of pizza boxes and delivery boxes in his car. And I said, oh, all right. And he gave us this quite heavy two boxes and a soft drink. Um, from Subway. I, I, I'm hoping, I haven't looked inside, I'm hoping it's just genuine kindness, it seems to be, and uh, very unusual. Um, <laughs> do we look like vagrants? Possibly. We certainly look like uh, people that have been walking quite a while, so maybe that's the reason. Premier Inn. Oh, I've never been so happy see a building. Oh, it's a long walk today. Long hard walk. We seem to have a restaurant attached to it. 
Um, I'm sure there's going to be all sorts of rigmarole getting in, but uh, oh, we're here, man. Oh, there, my scratch. This is not for video. So that's the first wash. Fill it up and do another one. Good day. You mind your step? It's quite wet. I know. Yeah. I'm coming back because of the puddle. It's a bit slippery, isn't it? Yeah. Are you all right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay.